to consider over the next couple of hours. The Nats, five and one of their last six, averaging close to seven runs. Starters going deep into games. And the bullpen, the best DRA in baseball. This weekend, a 10-game road trip begins in San Diego. The Nats and Padres go for a spin on Masson. Welcome to one of baseball's nicest ballparks, Petco Park, downtown San Diego. The Nats are 30 and 28. They've got some curly W's, some family and friends supporting them on the West Coast this weekend. And maybe now that they're two games over 500, we don't need to talk about the 500 mark anymore. Marlins lost at Chicago today. The Braves are out here playing in Arizona. And so the Nats open up a very critical 10 game road trip. FP3 in San Diego, four in San Francisco. But you really don't want to look ahead at all. Well, you, you don't want to look ahead. You got to take one game at a time. The old cliche. But when you come to the West Coast, you got to deal with time change. You got to deal with adjusting to playing games at ten o'clock at night on your timetable. And you also want to avoid disaster. That's what Felipe Alou always used to say about the West Coast trip. So a five and five trip right now wouldn't be the worst thing when you're talking about the teams the Nats are playing. But with the lineup intact right now, you're hoping for better. In the National League, the Nats are eighth in runs. They're sixth in home runs. Batting average is up over 250. But really, when you look back at the sweep of the Phillies, it's the timing of the hits and the way they put things together that was so impressive. Well, they're hitting 219 with runners in scoring position on the year. But in the last six games, they're hitting 291 with runners in scoring position. Why is that? Well, you got the whole lineup together, minus Bryce Harper. And it's, it's a chore to get through the lineup. You're, you're a pitcher right now facing the Nationals. Who do you pitch to? And if you're pitching to the guy in the box, you got to really work hard. So a 303 average as a team in the last six games in the run differential, plus 26. These guys are playing as good as anybody in baseball. So, so score four, and you're just about guaranteed to win. Score three or fewer, it's a battle for the Nets. Now, the Padres were in D.C. a little over a month ago, a four-game series. Washington really outscored them, but it came out even because the Padres, in their typical fashion, won a couple of low-scoring ball games. Yeah, the Padres are scrappy. Even though they're not swinging the bats well, they do the little things on offense, and they'll try to win ball games by doing, you know, stealing bases, bunting guys over. But you look at the numbers right here. They split the four game series the Nats did outscore them 20 to 9 but in the close games the Padres found a way to win and the Nats had a chance to win all four the highlight was Tanner Roark and his complete game shutout three hitter eight strikeouts one walk on Saturday April 26th the finest start of his major league career what does he have for the Padres and vice versa on the west coast tonight
the ballpark here in San Diego. Nats and the Padres after a four game split in D.C. back in April. Here we are end of the first week of June and by the waters of the bay tonight it's Washington and San Diego. Let's talk about the Nats last three starts FP. Jordan Zimmerman on Tuesday then Strasburg and Fister all of them outstanding. Well, you made a great point during the rain delay when we did all those recaps about how the offense is clicking and it gives these guys a little more breathing room to where they don't have to be as perfect. And now they're relaxed on the mound they know that they have some run support with Ryan Zimmerman back on the road back Wilson Ramos in the lineup and they're you know, pounding the strike zone you know if they make one mistake it's not the end of the world to where maybe a couple of weeks ago it was. We must say that Doug Fister made the best defensive plays of the three in his start. He also had a couple of sacrifice bunts yesterday. So here's Tanner Roark next in line Blake Trinan will finally get back into the rotation tomorrow. Last six games the starters five and one they've had decisions and here's an indication of how deep they're going into ball games. They've had decisions in 13 of the last 14 ball games. Yeah they're, they're pitching well and Tanner Roark loves the Padres last time out a complete game against San Diego. He had a perfect game through five innings so we'll see what he does here tonight. Well go six seven maybe eight turn it over to the major league's best bullpen and you can put the Padres in that category as well. Joaquin Benoit has been a closer elsewhere. Houston Street 18 for 18. But the Nats have the best bullpen ERA. Tyler Clippard yesterday followed by Rafael Soriano. Clippard two strikeouts in a 1 2 3 8. Soriano two strikeouts in a 1 2 3 9. Took care of the Phils. Momentum comes to San Diego. AT&T mobilizing your world and by your local DC area Land Rover retailers visit DC area Land Rover .com for special lease and finance offers. Hey you sit down close at Nationals Park you could end up on television. Buddy Black and Matt Williams two of the classiest guys in this league and the umpires gathered around former teammates with the Giants rehashing some old times out there. We'll set the umpiring crew for you in a moment. First of all, we'll tell you about the horrible weather out here. Awful. <laughs> it is a little muggy. 67 degrees, though. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Padres 15 and 17 at home. The Nats are 11 and 13 on the road. Batting average up to 252. Denard Span's been outstanding. 14 for 33. Averaging two hits a game, getting on base, scoring lots of run, runs, and the guy behind him, Anthony Rendon, is now in the top six in the league in runs scored, going 11 for his last 20. So bats warming up together, and it's really something to watch the way the Nats are going right now. They got a tough guy to face tonight, 27-year-old Tyson Ross. He's six and four with a 285 ERA. He's got some great stuff. He does. He, he, two seam fastball slider. Slider's his best pitch. He 
13th start of the year for Rosser to victory last time out against the White Sox after he pitched six innings, gave up one earned run on five hits, struck out five, walked three. A short stride really gets on top of the baseball, so he gets some downhill playing to his fastball. Short slider. Doesn't have a whole lot of sweep to it. The slider goes pretty much straight down. It's his best pitch, and it's tough to pick up. Second highest ground ball percentage among starting pitchers in Major League Baseball. And set the defense for the Padres tonight behind Tyson Ross. Quentin Venable Smith, the outfield. Cabrera Headley left side. Peterson Alonso right side. And Renee Rivera behind the plate. Crew chief has the plate tonight. 18th year in the big leagues for Jerry Meals. Paul Emmel, 15th year. Jordan Baker, second. And Angel Campos, part time minor leaguer, part time major league umpire. The rest of the crew tonight. Denard Spann, three for seven career with a double against Tyson Ross. Used to face him in the American League when Ross was with Oakland, the team that drafted him back in 08. Well, let's start the road trip of Saints. Here it goes. <laughs> San Diego, San Francisco, San Luis. The next three and strike one. We are underway at 10 11 Washington time. Span batting average up to 283. Twenty one multi hit games for Denard. That leads the ball club and that's eighth. Yeah, in the National League. Yeah, the most in the league, 23 by several hitters. Puig, Goldschmidt, Angel Pagan of the Giants, who the Nats will see next week, and he's been a catalyst for them. And a 1-1, Span will take it a little bit off the plate. Inside the numbers early with Jeep tonight. So over that hitting streak, seven games, we'll double that to 14. Look at the batting average and the on-base percentage. On base percentage plus slugging 980 for your leadoff guy. Lower he is to be on those legs. 2 1 pitch. Not even close. The Jerry Mills umpire has a small zone, very hitter friendly early in the game. He'll open it up later if you establish corners. But early on, he's an umpire, veteran guy that makes you throw the ball over the plate. He's not going to give you a whole lot on the corners. Span has walked 14 times this year, lost 29 walks in 76 innings. And the leadoff man's aboard. Off speed. Denard not biting. That'll bring in Anthony Rendon. And he's 11 for his last 20. Betting average back up over 270. Ross has faced the Nats three times in relief as a Padre. 1.50 ERA, and Rendon is one for two against him. A lot of hitting room right side. They get him off the stretch quickly. Denard, eight for ten this year. Now Ross has so much confidence in the slider. He'll throw in any count. If he's not throwing the fastball for a strike, he'll throw the slider early to get strike one. Target away. Look at that setup by the catcher. There's a slider. That's similar to the way you noted Ruiz was setting up against the Nets the other day. Left shin guard over the plate, everything else outside. I don't know why that line is behind the left handed batter's box. Look at it. Why is that even there? Ooh, and that one's right over the middle. I mean, it's the catcher's box, right? Just like a batter's box, and you're supposed to stay in it. Nobody ever does. Those lines are for no reason at all. Catchers boxes, batters boxes, <laughs> coaches boxes. Everybody is thinking outside the boxes yeah, these just, days. They're just suggestions. Oh two way out there is Rivera. Ross after a long look and he almost threw one away. Maybe it's a good thing Rivera was out there. Didn't have to go backhand on a pitch that was way outside. Tyson Ross listed at 6'5, 223, born in Berkeley, lives in Oakland. Came over here in kind of a nondescript trade November 16th of 2012 with an infielder, A.J. Kirby Jones, 
Our left handed pitcher Andrew Werner and infielder Andy Perino. Not exactly a blockbuster, but it's turned out really well for the Padres. And Ross coming off a big May where he allowed one earned run in five of his six May starts. The Bruins are hitting 241 against him. Long look again. And another one he almost threw away. Well, he gets so on top of it. You watch his stride, he's a short strider. You know, most pitchers want to really reach out with that stride to get velocity, but when you look at his stride, it's very compact, very short. That allows him to get on top of the ball. That also will make him throw some balls in the dirt. And Denard Span heads up at first base looking for that. And Span has Ross a bit preoccupied here. Rendon checks one to left center. This is a big ballpark. Can it hold it? No. Into the second deck. And Anthony Rendon puts the Nats up by two just like that. He adds to his career high. That's number nine. That was a bomb. How about that for a 24th birthday blast? I mean, you had time to read War and Peace in the middle of that fly ball, and it landed in the upper deck. Ball does not carry here. One of the biggest ballparks in all of baseball, and Anthony Rendon just made it look small. I don't even think he and Desmond was ready to take his helmet off. Look, he had to put it in the rack. <laughs> Are you, Desi? Here's Zimmerman. A little tapper in front of the plate. And a wide throw stretched by Yonder Alonso for the first down. Well, there goes the no-hitter in a big way. Anthony Rendon, welcome to San Diego, and welcome to the West Coast trip. Foot down early. Oh, my goodness. Watch where this lands. Right over the Simer sign. Or the Padres sign, nice call. Mm. And just like that, there goes a the perfect game. There goes the shutout. They're calling it 425 here. There goes the no hitter in the shutout. Wow. Wow. Nats 57th home run of the year, and you got to have some fun <laughs> after one like that. Well, they know this ballpark is huge, and he just made it look tiny. There's a guy who's had great success over the years in this ballpark, Adam LaRoche, one of the visiting. Players who has done considerable damage in this ballpark to the tune of 10 home runs and 132 at bats. Quickly 0 2 now to him. Facing Ross for the first time. I just like the fact that Anthony Rendon was ready to hit. Tyson Ross hadn't really thrown too many strikes, and a lot of times a hitter you can get lulled to sleep thinking, well, I'm not going to be aggressive right here. Make him come in the strike zone, and he did, and he was ready for it. Ross gives up his seventh home run of the year. And LaRoche will just reach for that pitch tailing away and stay alive. That's an incredible average in a one two count. Yeah, don't get ahead of Adam LaRoche. It's really dangerous. And a little bit upstairs, maybe a little off the plate. Counts even 2 2. And LaRoche up the middle, but that's where they are playing on the shift. That one grabbed by Everth Cabrera, the shortstop, two down. That'll bring in Wilson Ramos. Ramos is hit safely, eight of his last nine games with 12 hits. Got the day off yesterday. Jose Lobaton was on base twice with a walk and a base hit. So important to jump out early in any major league game, but when you're playing a team that's struggling to score runs, it's even bigger. 
The Padres won three to two on Wednesday, Carp. The only hit they got was a first inning bunt single by Everth Cabrera. They drew six walks. They ended up winning the game for the third time in franchise history. They were winners despite having one hit. The only other times they did it was April 20th, 2010 against the Giants and July 19th, 1975 against the Cubs. So they were one hit. <laughs> And it was a bunt single. Yeah. And they won. You would figure the score would be 1-0, but they scored three. Ramos with a tapper off the plate. Trying to make the play, Chase Headley. And Wilson Ramos has an infield hit. Boy, watch Chase Headley. Almost said Chase Utley since we just played the Phillies. Watch him take his time here. I thought, well, he knows he's got Wilson Ramos running, very deliberate, mm -hmm. and Ramos beat it by two steps. Even a good throw doesn't have Wilson, so not a whole lot of sense of urgency from Chase Headley right here. And Ramos, no, oh, not gets one. Good hustle by the Buffalo. Yeah. Nets have their second base hit now, down to the number six man, Ian Desmond. And a tapper foul. The heaviest 225 in baseball this guy's hitting. Over his last 11 games, Ian hasn't collected a lot of hits, but he's had four homers, eight RBIs, he's walked seven times, and he has scored seven runs. I mean, the hits in the average will come, but he's doing amazing damage. Going to get the call with a fastball to the outside edge. The approach has been better. He's been going deeper into counts. He's been getting into counts and seeing more pitches. So if you keep doing that on a consistent basis, the hits are going to take care of themselves. They're going to come. That average should be up around 250, 260 by the All Star break if he stays with this approach. Heads in there. Ian Desmond caught looking on a couple of fastballs. Span walks to lead off the game. Anthony Rendon goes down and gets it. Right center. Left center, deepest part of different ballparks. Doesn't bother that second year, man. Well, you rock Anthony. Rendon's RBI total now up to 34. He leads the ball club. Padres are last in the league in batting average and runs. Second, actually third from the bottom in home runs. But Seth Smith is doing his part. 367 at home, 319 against right handers. And he's sporting an on base percentage of 414. He's kind of like John Carlos Stanton, leading his team in almost every different category. And here's Tanner Roark. What does he do to follow up that complete game tonight? Well, two seam fastball, four seam fastball, averaging 91 miles an hour. The breaking balls, slider 83, curveball 73. And his change up at 82 miles an hour. I'm trying to bring down the home, well, the road ERA to where the home ERA is. 3.25 overall, but away from Nationals Park, a rather puzzling 5.65. Trying to even his record at four and four tonight. 
Everett Cabrera went 0 for 4 against him on that Saturday afternoon in D.C. Eighty seven right in there his evening underway with a strike. Important guy to keep off base now that you've taken the lead Cabrera has 12 stolen bases Seth Smith and Carlos Quentin to follow. Cabrera 27 years of age the switch hitter and down he goes. Roark not necessarily a strikeout guy, but a good start. Well, three pitch, get your glove for Tanner Roark to start this one out. The fastball just in the upper 80s so far for Roark. His velocity has dropped this year. Last year, his fastball averaged 92. This year, averaging just 90. But if you keep it down, you have some sink to it. I don't think that's a huge deal with Tanner Roark and his style of pitching. Well, next up, a Really, an emerging story for the Padres. Seth Smith, 31 year old outfielder, 265 career batting average, put up some pretty good numbers for a couple of seasons with the Rockies, 240, 253 in Oakland the last two years. And he is doing big things here with San Diego. Look at that change up, 80 just floating right to the inside edge and down. And the fastball rides up and away. Padres as a team hitting 221. They are minus 35 on the run differential. He went off speed again and missed 2 2. Only the Mets with 42, and the Cardinals with 32 have hit fewer home runs than San Diego's 45. That'll be out of play. So the death defense tonight behind Tanner Roark, Zimmerman, Span McLeod the outfield, Jason Worth with his first day off. So Jason Worth going a little Ferris Bueller today, and <laughs> Desmond Rendon, Espinosa LaRoche, and Wilson Ramos behind the play. Did you white out Zimmerman at that other position? I didn't. I, didn't. I was going to take a picture of it and tweet it. I put uh, Span center field, Rendon third base, Zimmerman third base, LaRoche first base. <laughs> Just out of habit, I put him as. That would be a crowded third base. The third baseman. Both the shifts now, you never know. Well, you could put 3BE for third base extended. He is behind Anthony Rendon by a couple hundred feet. That would just have it. 2 2. And a ground ball to the right side for Danny Espinosa. Two in the. Two outs. That'll bring in Carlos Quentin. Who's been battling injuries this year? They've got him back in the lineup now. Combined last two years, 29 home runs, 90 RBIs. Right knee surgery ended his season last year. Left knee bone contusion had him on the DL. This season, he's only had 39 ABs in 16 games so far. And this guy's healthy; he can do some damage. Great breaking ball, 0 and 2. A good slider down away, 82 miles an hour, makes it look like a strike, and you go to swing, and it's not. Quentin way out in front too. The Nats have quieted down the ballpark here with that Rendon home run. When they get everybody in the park from the big party they had out in center field earlier tonight, it'll be a little more raucous in here. Breaking ball away. I yeah, got a beer fest going on the lawn to the right of the batting eye right over the beach. I don't think they're coming in. I think they're good right there. <laughs> All kinds of craft beers from the San Diego area. They've been there for about two hours. And that'll be foul. And they have no idea who's playing and they don't care. <laughs> a 
I just think it's horrible they don't know that Roark went the distance last time against these guys. The only thing they care about going the distance is the bottom of that keg. 16th pitch of the inning, and Quentin on an off speed pulls another one way foul. Looks like that's the place to have your glove here at Petco Park. Padres averaging 25,877. That's 13th in the league out of 15 ball clubs. I'll tell you what, this is one of the most underrated ballparks in baseball. I'm talking about that with you before we went on the air. It is. Just a gorgeous setting, a gorgeous city. I think if they move the fences in even a little bit more, every free agent will want to play here. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, they did move them in before last year. There's some high heat. Tanner Roark with two strikeouts. A one, two, three first. That's a good way to reward your teammates after two runs. Here comes Espinosa. The sounds of a ball club swinging the bats really well. Click after click after click off the sweet spot. Top of the second, Danny Espinosa in the three game series against the Phils. Five of 11 with two RBIs. He's gotten a little bit hot from the left side, got that batting average from that side off the interstate and up at 213. He's hitting 218 overall. Behind him, Nate McLeod playing right field with Worth off tonight. And then the pitcher who can handle the bat, Tanner Roark. There's Nate who's had a good run last couple of weeks. Now he has to adjust again to being a part time player. It's good to get Jason Worth off his feet and keep Nate McLeod swinging the bat. Jerry Meals calls the high strike there. One and two to Espinosa. 0 for 1 career against Tyson Ross. Career record of 15 and 30. Half of his career appearances now starts. 50th start tonight in his 101st big league ball game. Last six games, only you Darvish got in the way. Look at the run differential, the average. With runners in scoring position as well, and the on base percentage. Boy, did you, Darvish, get in the way. <laughs> I'll tell you why after this pitch. Because had the Nats gone on to run the table, Matt Williams would have had it done as Babe Ruth in San Francisco. As oh. he promised 10 wins in a row. <laughs> so they would be what? Six, uh, six of the 10 there? Yeah. Wow. And he would have had to do it where he did it before in San Francisco. Mm. I'm sticking to that. I thought, well, hey. Only seven to go. One and two. 
and Espinosa will swing over that one at 86. Two K's for Tyson Ross, who can use that breaking ball against left-handers as well. You can vote at least 21 times and select the Nats as your favorite club to be eligible to receive a 50% off discount. That's an offer for up to two tickets to a select Nats home game. So get ready for the All-Star Game July 15th. Vote early, often, and vote Nats. Nice. You just check the box. I worked on it. Go to nationals.com slash vote through July 3rd. Here's Nate McLeod, 10 for his last 31. Facing Ross for the first time. Right side bouncer. Alonzo waiting for it, going to the bag, two outs. All right, folks, it's time to tweet your photo using hashtag Mass and Fan Photos for a chance to have it shown in future broadcasts. That's brought to you by AT&T. Tanner Roark, three for 17 this year, seven big league hits. Vera continues to sit outside. The fastball missing 1 1. There's that slide piece at 88. That's a hard slider. Yeah, it's straight down, too. It doesn't have a whole lot of tilt to it, meaning it doesn't sweep. Just really gets it out front on top. Tough to pick up. Padres overall 27 and 33. They are 12 behind the Giants. Nets just a game back of Atlanta. Braves gave up a first inning run at Arizona. We'll keep you posted on that one as the evening goes on. And as we told you earlier today, the Marlins were beaten at Chicago. So this three team juggling act at the top of the East could get a little topsy turvy with the Nats win. 2 2 and Roark down. Since the Rendon home run, Ross retires six of the next seven. What a night in San Diego. Back to work goes Tanner Roark. Six, 2007 Trevor Hoffman first reliever ever with that fastball to make it to 500 saves 10 inning uh, 10 ninth inning pitches that night that was Russell Martin for the final out carried off he would finish his career with 601 second only to Mariano Rivera with 652 
ironic that he did it on a fastball when his best pitch and maybe the best pitch I've ever seen is changeup. He had all you guys looking for the changeup. He'd buzz you with 87 here and there. By the way, also on that night, kind of a odd little ironic twist. Adam LaRoche hit a three run homer against the Nats. But a wild pitch gave Washington a walk off win, beating the Pirates 6 5 back in 2007. Chase Headley having a rough year, hitting a buck 97. And this one high in the air and down the right field line, no problem at all for an outstanding defender in Nate McLeod. Yeah, first day in, new ballpark. Nate McLeod with a nice play negotiating the warning track and the foul ground down the right field line. Nicely done. Yeah, things are a little quirky here down in that right field corner. They did smooth out some of the dimensions of this park did last year. You see that peak? Yeah. Took his eyes off, looked at the wall. Found the baseball again, knew right where he's at. That was good stuff. Next up, the first baseman, Yonder Alonzo, lines one to left. That is a fair ball into the corner. Alonzo into that at bat, hitting 206. We'll check in with his 17th extra base hit of the year on double number 13. Well, inside out swing got on top of the baseball. It's the elevated two seamer from Tanner Roark. As soon as that thing lands fair, automatic double. Ryan Zimmer did a nice job of digging it out down the corner and getting it back in. Next up, Will Venable. Good ball player. Just having a rough time at the plate right now, like the rest of his team, except for Seth Smith. Padres gave out some long term contracts recently. Venable, one of those guys. Jed Jerko, another. He just went on the DL with plantar fasciitis. And the Padres, a struggling offensive ball club, but they play a lot of close games. This one hit well to left. Zimmerman into the corner. Ryan has it. No problem at all. Drifting toward that 336 mark. Nicely negotiated. Not a real tricky left field here at Petco, but a good route by Ryan Zimmerman. And this ball was hit the other way, so it's tailing away. He realized it. And I thought the throw at the end was good. Hit Ian Desmond right in the chest. And kept Yonder Alonso at second base. Pretty tough chance, not a problem. Here's Rene Rivera, the catcher. So Ryan was out here early with Tony Tarasco, Matt Williams, the coaching staff, throwing to bases today, through to second, through to third, through to home. He said his arm looked good. He long tossed on top of it, part of you know, getting back to full strength out there with the throwing program. Good now, run back on that fastball at 91. One ball, one strike. And also getting used to throwing to a base. Well, you nailed it the other night, talking about outfielders and their throws. Most important thing, hit the relay guys right in the numbers. Everything else will take care of itself if you keep it accurate and don't airmail balls all over the place. One and two now as Roark pulls out the swing back fastball a couple of times. Yeah, 93. Rivera occasional pop three homers 12 RBIs. Almost wants it down and he buries the slider. Very close to the corner. Ramos held it there. This will be close on the Mercedes Benz pitch track. 
pretty good run back to it. Mm. Jerry Mills has called him wider than that already tonight. Yeah, he's had the zone out there for Tyson Ross. 3 2. And that is right in there. Not sure what Rivera was looking for on a payoff pitch. Fastball right down the middle. Here's our Honda third inning duo. It's Denard Span who's already walked and scored tonight. As FP said, 21 multi hit games. The hot Rendon, the hot Zimmerman right after him. Span Rendon Zimmerman coming up. Let's check in with PNC Bank. Our minor league report for the Achiever and you and the Nats have already selected eight players. First up, Eric Feedy out of UNLV, 6'4, 180. Had that ulnar collateral ligament surgery June 3rd, but the Nats have had success with guys before. Get them healthy, get them throwing. Lucas Giolito comes to mind. Teammate. And he played with Bryce Harper, yeah, right? Teammates with Bryce Harper in high school. How cool is that? Nice. Tyson Ross starting Denard Span off for the breaking ball. That is a two hopper right at Jace Peterson. Next up, the home run hitter. Anthony Rendon's put on quite a power show this week. Almost hit one out yesterday to right center. He goes other gap here. Watch him pull his hands in. Look where that ball is. He's realizing there's a lot of sink on it, and he just short arms that ball without a whole lot of extension. He got an extension after contact, but he just pulled his hands in so nicely to get the barrel to baseball. You have to have some kind of quick bat and quick hands to get the barrel to that sinker from Tyson Ross to hit it that far. How hit about speed. that for a birthday present on birthday number 24? C note on the hit speed. Hmm. Good as that. And the 0-2 breaking ball buried low and away. Well, we thought he was pretty good last year. But Rendon played in 98 games, hit seven homers and 351 at bats. Drove in 35 last year. He's at 34 here. Ooh, and that one was hanging up and in. Well, with the way he's played third base and second base, too, for that matter, if he continues to stay hot through the month of June, there's no reason why he can't be in Minneapolis.
That's going to punch him out. As Jerry Meals continues to get that outside edge. To Tyson Ross. So some of the Nats right handers will have to make the adjustment. All week long Masson has given you a chance to win tickets to Ryan Zimmerman's A Night in the Park featuring Billy Currington and Jared Neiman. Check out Masson Nationals on Twitter and Facebook to find out how you can win and help support Zim's foundation in the fight against multiple sclerosis. It's a great night. Be there. It's awesome. For a great cause. I can't wait. There's Ryan. A little tapper in front of home plate first time. Tyson Ross threw him out. Locked in all of a sudden. Those two runs early that he got in the Rendon homer look big right now because everything Tyson Ross is throwing is right to his spots. Whether it's the two seam fastball away, the slider, just darting that down and away. Glove side. And that uh, previous Nissan track looked like somebody wrecked up three billiard balls right on the lower edge away on that strike zone. Pretty impressive. Ryan four for 11 coming into tonight since returning tries to go out and get it and Tyson Ross. Wow. That would be seven straight for him and nine of the last ten. Nats and the bottom of third inning. Anthony Rendon with a two run jack. But Tanner Roark doing his thing against the Padres again tonight. He's been down the strike zone. He's been up in the strike zone for strike three. So getting the strikes early down the zone, elevating with two strikes. And he started out at 87 88. He's up to 93. And there's Aaron Barrett, folks. Two pitch guy, fastball mid 90s, and a nasty slider. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing the stands right now. Already done the Always thing. wondered what relievers do early in the ball game. Just go out, mingle a little bit. You know, they don't work till nine, nine thirty. Lots of time for the bear. This is the rookie Jace Peterson. Saw a little bit of him when the Padres were in Washington earlier. 58th overall pick three years ago. Out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Went to McNeese State. And right now, four for 24 and 11 ball games, trying to bust up an 0 for 10. Tough time to do it when you're batting eighth. Nice playing a new position too, second base. He was a shortstop in college, and he just made the transition because of, like you said, the Jed Jerko plantar fasciitis. Split time with Alexi Amarista over there. Roark trying to go after the number eight guy here. He threw him a strike, and that's foul. Just enough hook on it.
Santa Roarch's ERA at home 1.55 on the road 5.65. Good ballpark to turn that thing around tonight. He has a lead to work with. And a 3 2 to the leadoff man with the pitcher next. Got him. So even to a left handed batter there's a strike over on that side of the plate. As Jerry Meals brings up Jace Peterson. Well I thought that pitch. Might have been a hair in. It could have gone either way. Tanner Roark gets the benefit of the doubt. He's been throwing strikes. But look where Ramos is set up away. So usually when you see a catcher reach across like that. You don't get a borderline pitch. You see how. Wilson's glove went with the pitch and actually took it further inside. That's because he was expecting it on the other side of the plate. Tyson Ross next. That was Roark's fourth strikeout. Out of seven outs he has in this game. Ross two for 20 this year. And as a big league hitter, eight for 58. Got him with a slider. The ball did hop into the Ramos mitt, requiring a throw. Five strikeouts. Padres go one for nine with that Alonzo double first time around. Let's do the Toyota case for kids right now. Why not? The DC area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a $37 donation of the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by Tanner Roark tonight and an advanced pitcher this season. Here's Cabrera struck out to start the game for San Diego and a high changeup. Doubles up and misses again. And a 2 1. There's a punt. And a good one. Roark's got a play. And he gets it done. Tanner Roark with the bare hand. And that's one of San Diego's speediest guys. Well, he's such a good athlete. A lot like Doug Fister on the mound. He's a baseball player that just happens to pitch. Watch this play by Tanner Roark. Bare hand gets rid of it quick. Underhand throw. Right on the money for the third out here in the third.
this year that ratio is much improved. He struck out just 29 times this season and already has 26 walks. Now he's benefited from some unintentional intentional walks when teams have pitched around him. But hitting coach Rick Shue told me that LaRoche's timing has been excellent this season and it's allowed him to read off speed pitches really well. That's let him either lay off tough pitches out of the zone or stay on pitches away and serve them to the opposite field. And guys, LaRoche's on base percentage is coming into today was 416. That's up more than 75 points above his career average. Yeah, when he went on the DL, he was in the top three or four in that department in the National League. Batting average was in the top seven or eight. He needs about another week's worth of at bats to have enough to qualify in those departments. Lined up the middle first time, the catcher, or rather the shortstop career, pardon me, the man who caught that ball. And they have the shift on again. Chase Headley stays home on the left side. Now he'll really back up with a count of 0 and 2. Watching all the choppers. The Nats are hitting foul and even into play. It's even more impressive than Anthony Rendon elevated the pitch he got to put him up 2 nothing. They're really having trouble getting Tyson Ross, who's just throwing downhill right now in a big way. They're having trouble elevating, and it's understandable. One ball and two strikes. LaRoche averaging a home run in this ballpark career every 13.2 at bats. The most frequent of any visiting player. It's a breaking ball heading for his back foot. 2 2. Just loving that glove side right now, whether it's righties or lefties. Everything to Tyson Ross's glove side. Just wearing out that side of the plate. Target in. And LaRoche can't get down to get it. Three strikeouts in a row. Six in the game for Tyson Ross. Well, it's only 8 o'clock here. Thanks for staying up late with us for Nats baseball tonight. Hope to send you a curly W all across the country and get the Nats their fourth consecutive win. They're trying to make it six out of seven here. Here's Ramos chopped a base hit off the plate first time. And that one out to short to his left. Good play, Everth Cabrera. Two quick outs. The Beltway Burger Pack is back. The Nationals Beltway Burger Pack mm -hmm. includes a ticket, burger, fries, and a drink starting at just $20 for Thursday and Friday home games. First use your tickets online at nationals.com slash burger pack. There's red people here, too. Nice look, the white cap. The red bill, the red jersey. Nats fans all over the place today with that long walk we had to the ballpark. <laughs> that went off the end of the bat. Desmond and Cabrera will go up the middle and retire him. That was a seven pitch inning for Tyson Ross in a two nothing game. Padres dragging the field. 
trying to get nice for the infielders. But this guy decided to entertain the crowd with his amazing dance moves. <laughs> now, while he entertained the crowd, and I thought he did a really nice job, by the way. I wish I had those moves. I don't. I'd be hacked off if I was the other guys that actually dragged the infield and he just stood there and did nothing. They were working really hard he in did, his absence. He did nothing. He did not pull his weight. And nobody cared about them. Freight Rail Works, here's our Padre Dua, bottom of the fourth. What they're doing against the East this year in a curveball. Way upstairs to Seth Smith. Actually, it was pretty good. That was just a little bit of it. Yeah, his, his best moves came before that. He was. We, we won't give him that. What a pitch up. It's a fly ball up. And they don't go much of anywhere in this ballpark unless you absolutely kill it. Denard Span for the first down. Well, the later it gets, the thicker the air gets, and the ball goes nowhere. But you can go to Nats Park if you bring your group gathering. This season, group seats are a great. For company outings, family reunions, and special events, tickets start just $9 for groups of 25 or more. So get your 24 best friends together and bring them out to the ballpark. Call the number on your screen. Go to the website. Here's Quentin who struck out swinging. First time. It was kind of fun to come to this ballpark seven, eight years ago and see the construction that took, a, took place around here. A lot of new buildings out beyond the outfield. Lofts, office buildings. Of course, Western Metal Supply Company has been here forever before the ballpark. Very nice how they integrated that old edifice into the stadium. But all, a lot of those buildings you're looking at out there opened up and were constructed since this ballpark was built. It has really revitalized what was once a very rough part of downtown San Diego. 0 2 pitch to Quentin. It's a new trendy area here. Yeah. East Village, right out. Down the right field line back in that area. And on the left side, the gas lamp area. I don't know what you're talking about. We've closed it a few times. You can't fool me. Rendon keeps it close. And then he really pulled LaRoche off the bag with a sidearm throw. Anthony had plenty of time, but that thing just ran away on him. And that'll be his sixth error of the year. Well, he did a nice job of not panicking after he dropped the ball. He knew that he had Carlos Quentin running. He had time, but I don't know if that ball got him in the meat hand or not. That could have affected the throw. Let's see where it gets Rendon. Maybe a tough hop. It gets him. Yeah, it got him in the bare hand. See him shake his hand. Look at his hand. And that definitely affected the throw. So he's been accurate. He's been more on top from third base. And you see the finger. He looks at it. Still knows he has plenty of time. But when you can't think, feel your finger, it's hard to throw the ball across the infield. That hurts. Nationals 50th error of the year in their 50 actually now 60th game. That hurts and it'll hurt for a couple of days too. Next up Jay Sedley fouled out to McClough right field line first time. If you weren't with us when we set the lineups in the defense early Nate McClough in right tonight. Jason Worth getting the evening off. Ian Desmond got a day off yesterday. So the return of Ryan Zimmerman also buys some rest for teammates at certain times. Rest and it keeps guys fresh that you're going to need to win games off the bench. It's a win win. And Roark looking for a ground ball throws a change up to Headley. Who's hit into a team most eight double play balls this year. Two years ago, Chase Headley led the league with 115 RBIs. Had a fractured thumb in spring training last year, got him off to a slow start. Drove in just 50. Had a $60 million deal on the table when we were here last year and said, I don't want to talk about it during the season. I want to wait till the year's over. Well, there are some who feel this would be his last year, possibly, in San Diego. We'll see. 60 million, huh? I ain't waiting for nothing if you offer me six and nine. I'll not. wait for the eight to drive. I'm knocking kids over to sign that deal. <laughs> oh man. It's 
kind of interesting his previous high in RBIs before that 115 had been 64 in any season. He strained his right calf April 24 that Washington. During that four game series hitting a buck 86 at that time. A little higher now but still under 200. And he rolls over that one LaRoche can't get to it before it goes foul. Well, there's a lot of security here in San Diego and you know we talked to Padres people not a lot coming through the system right now. So you have guys here that really aren't looking over their shoulders and have multi year deals. Jed Jerko signed a thirty five million dollar deal. He's having a scuffle yeah, this year. A buck 62. Just 33 hits and 204 at bats. Mm. Two two. Only the second inning tonight. Tanner Roark has had to pitch off the stretch. Did it to two hitters in the second after the Alonzo double. And a 3 2 pitch with one out. It's now two outs. He's had some blow by stuff going tonight. Strikeout number six. Nissan will track it. Well, it's a long swing right here by Chase Headley from the left side. A switch hitter. He goes in with the fastball. And at 92 miles an hour, you can see the front shoulder kind of spin out of there early and not a whole lot left to the swing. Head flies out. And big strikeout for Tanner Rohr. Well, he struck out eight Padres in that complete game. So that game and this one tonight, the only time he has struck out more than five batters in a game. So San Diego both times. And you remember he had the perfect game going through five. And I remember saying I didn't think he had perfect game stuff. I know there's a lot of luck involved in perfect game, but when you think of the perfect game, or at least I do, I think of total domination. Obviously, you're going to get a couple plays where your defense helps you out. But it just gives you an idea of. Just need to develop a term for it, maybe row arcing, because that's what he does every <laughs> fifth day. He goes out there and fights you. Yonder Alonso, the only hit tonight, a double. That's a really good looking slider right inside to a left handed batter. Well, it, it's tight, it's late, and it's short. Watch the break. Not a whole lot to it, but just subtle enough to lock up Alonso. Good command, good placement down the zone. And a one two target away means fastball or change up. It was the 91 and missed by plenty. Ball two. Tanner Roar came into this inning averaging about 14 pitches per frame. Look at the big hook on that. Padres gone. 13 innings against San Diego. No runs on four hits. Here's our Honda Dua. Top of the fifth, it's Danny Espinosa. Great series against.
thing. One hit, no runs. A couple of runs for the Nats heading to the top of the fifth. As promised earlier in the game, here's your at t fan flow. You've been waiting for it all night. Every night. Let's see. Who do we got tonight? That's the Keatons. That's Mother Elise, Father Stephen. That's Alex P. on the left. And Mallory. And they're from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Nice. Jennifer, not in the picture. I don't know where she is. Been wondering what they were up to these days. That's a nice update. Thanks. There are members of the Espinosa family in San Diego this weekend. There are. Tyson Ross has it going on right now. He has retired 10 in a row. 12 of the last 13. 7 pitch fourth inning. Just when we started thinking, well, maybe the pitch count will get him after six or seven. He had thrown 50 pitches in the first three. But that's mainly because the first inning took him 24. When three men reached base, one hit it out of the park, Rendon. That'll ride upstairs, two and one. Hit hard, right field corner. As we mentioned, a little quirky down there, some angles. The ball doesn't deflect right to the right fielder, and that gives Espinosa a chance to get to third base. It's a leadoff triple for Danny Espinosa. And that peed that wall down there. Ball takes a different kind of hop. We hope Danny's okay going into the bag. Well, Danny Espinosa has been hot lately. Last five games, he's six for 18, 333 average. So, had a one for two so far tonight and a triple down the right field corner. And I love the fact that he stretched a double into a triple. And they're going to call timeout right now as he regroups at third base. And you see the hustle by Espinosa. I'd like to welcome the rest of you on Masson who saw Oakland beat Baltimore tonight. Nationals are in San Diego, leading 2 0 fifth inning. Danny Espinosa just tripled into the right field corner to lead off, and now Nate McLeod has a chance to put the Nats on top by three. He bounced out to first base, first time up. Bob FP and our reporter Dan Coco on site here for the first of a 10 game road trip. San Diego, San Francisco, St. Louis. And McLeod makes an offer. No swing. Counts even 1 1. That was Danny Espinosa's second triple of the year. Takes the Tyson Ross slider. Two and one. Espinosa is a perfect example of the triple on how 99% of guys slide head first on a triple. I mean, you're just going so fast, your momentum's going toward the bag. You just dive into third. That's how you do it. And all the talk about Bryce Harper getting hurt because he slid head first on the triple. If Danny Espinosa just did the same thing, and 9.9 .9 out of every triple you see in 10 triples is going to be like that. Espinosa has to hold his McLeod. Didn't take a full swing. One out. Now Tanner Roark will step in. Let's just watch the speed of Danny Espinoza. Watch Danny hit in the bottom and in the box. Watch Danny run. And I think, and I could be wrong on this, that Danny's the fastest guy on the team. I think Denard Spin might have an argument. Nate McLeod. Tanner Roark's going to walk down and visit with third base coach Bob Henley. Well, we were going to put the squeeze sign on. <laughs> I think it's no longer a mystery if Wait, it was on. You, you have a guy that can handle the bat. I and mean, there's a lot of things you can do right here. And Danny Espinosa is a smart, fast base runner, so he can read a bunch. 
I mean, if you, if you place it perfectly right here, even to first base, Espinosa will see the down angle off the bat and go. Roark takes a swing at a slider. Tanner, one career RBI. That was last year. I mean, Tyson Ross has got it going on a little bit. Danny Espinosa took advantage. And he's tough to put into play. So we'll see if they decide to bunt right here after taking a hack. That is a chopper foul. Outfield way around to the offside, really shallow and right. Seth Smith. 0 2 pitch, and Roark can't get the slider. Two down. Strikeout number seven. That slider is just filthy right now from Tyson Ross. How about 14 strikeouts by the starters in this one today? Top of the order, Denard Spann. 0 for 1, leadoff walk in the first. And he got to trot around on the Anthony Rendon upper deck shot to left center. The one thing I will say about Tyson Ross, he really hasn't shown right handers anything on the inner half, not even to get him from diving out away. It seems like every pitch he's thrown tonight, primarily to the glove side, his glove side, which means into lefties and away to righties. There he goes again. He's trying. Yeah, turns that one over, low and away. Dallas Keuchel of Houston, Tyson Ross of San Diego. Most ground ball outs. Span goes the other way, hits the ball well, but Carlos Quentin right there. Lead off triple. Nats couldn't get Danny Espinosa that final 90 feet, and it's still a 2 nothing game. Of the fifth inning. It's been a pitcher's duel, folks. Tanner Roark is doing his thing. Tyson Ross doing his thing. Made one mistake to Anthony Rendon, did Ross, and that's been the difference. But Tanner Roark has been doing it all on the mound. He loves pitching against the Padres. Complete game shutout last time against them in D.C. And kind of picking up right where he left off tonight. And he's been doing it with the glove, too. The former All State quarterback, a fantastic athlete. Makes a great play right here, the sidearm throw. To get the speedy Everth Cabrera to end the third inning. So good Geico highlights for Tanner Roark. He faces Venable Rivera Peterson, 6 7 8 for the Padres. 61 pitches, 41 strikes. 
And a chopper there. Look at Roark. Bounce off the mound. The Fister effect <laughs> is taking place on this pitching staff. <laughs> well, they're both good athletes. I talked to Doug Fister after a start yesterday, and I said, hey, I'm pumping you up for gold glove because I think you have what it takes. I mean, you field your position so well. Doug told me it's his dream to win that award. He wants to win a gold glove award. He works hard at it. He said it's something that he would always cherish. He's always wanted that award. But he might be getting stiff competition from the guy in the mound, his own teammate, right now, <laughs> Tanner Roark. I mean, how good are both these guys? You had uh, Jordan Zimmerman in the mix. He can field his position. Steven Strasburg and Gio Gonzalez as well, but Tanner Roark and Doug Fister, two of the best fielding pitchers you'll ever see. Here's Rene Rivera, and it might only come into play once a game, a couple of times every other game. But man, you can save yourself some base runners and some pitches. Fister and Roark do that. Just got to knock out that whole stretch thing at first for Doug Fister, because I'm surprised he did not blow out on that stretch <laughs> yesterday. There's tomorrow night starter Blake Trinan alongside him. He'll finally get back into the rotation after all these days off the last week and a half. That fastball runs up and in on Rivera. One ball, two strikes. Well, it's just fun to watch a guy who had been overlooked for a number of years get to the big leagues last year, win seven out of eight decisions. Pitch well in spring training. Gets a spot in the rotation. And doing his thing. Sounded like a busted bat. Ian Desmond guns out Rene Rivera. Two down. Tomorrow night, Blake Trinan and WUSA 9 will join us. That's a face hard throwing right hander Andrew Kashner just back off the DL. Jordan Zimmerman Sunday against lefty Eric Stoltz. And then you're looking at three of the four in San Francisco. Night games and a day game next Thursday. Is Blake ready to rock and roll? 97, 98. Left side, Anthony Rendon took a funny hop on him on what looked like a routine play. That's going to be his second error of the night. And obviously that ball came up on him. Yeah, it took a weird hop at the end, didn't it? Maybe there's some English on this baseball. Let's see, right? Well, he kind of got flat footed. Anytime as a fielder, you get flat footed. Your glove will get stiff, but this will give us a better shot of it. I yeah, just really didn't give with the in-between hop. And once you set your feet, you're at the mercy of the baseball, and that's what happened. Here's the pitcher, Tyson Ross. Ross struck out. First time up, second out back in the third. Nationals on top, 2 0, since the first batter made contact in this game. That's a foul tip, and it's 0 2. Goes right to work, runs the fastball in there. Strikeout number eight. Last time he was perfect through five innings against the Padres. Tonight, a Yonder Alonso double is the only hit. If it wasn't for that, we'd be talking about a potential no hitter.
Cats. Dan Coco, FP and I need some metal supplies. What do you have for us out there? I know where you can find them, gentlemen. I'm here outside the warehouse, the Western Metal Supply Company building. This building is over 100 years old. It was going to be demolished when they built Petco Park to make room for the yard, but they decided to keep it. They renovated it. There's a restaurant in there. There's a team store. There's some suites. And an interesting quirk is that the foul line right on the corner, you can see the foul pole there. If a ball hits to the left of that foul pole, it'll kick left because that the foul pole is right on the corner of the building. If a ball is fair, it'll kick right. It kind of makes it easier on the umpires that way. Just a really nice touch, an original touch for this ballpark that kind of makes it stand out, a little distinctive uh, part of the park in left field. What if it falls straight down? I think if, if it falls straight down, it's a home run. That means it hit right on the edge. I think Mass and Dan should test it out and throw himself against the foul pole. I just love the I way. <laughs> I disagree. I love the way they integrated that into the park. That's good stuff. You, know, you see little quirks about ballparks that you just never really realize. You just see a yellow line up there, but yeah, that is good stuff. Anthony Rendon, one for two with a two run homer, called out on strikes in the third. The Nationals have one hit since that home run. Or actually, since that inning, Ramos had an infield hit later in that first inning. And then the Espinosa triple last. Time around in the fifth, and they couldn't get him home. One ball, one strike, sixth inning underway. I bet you that's a great view from up there where Dan was watching the ball game. I would think those would be like sitting on top of the monster in Fenway Park. Yeah. And that hard slider, low and away, two and one. Bunch of people on top of the metal supply building. I mean, I think that's the place to be. That's where I'd want to sit if I was watching a ball game here at Petco. Three and one. Anthony Rendon is 12 for his last 22 with four home runs and eight RBIs. It's over seven games. He's taken the team. RBI lead with 34. And he bounces one over the mound. Jace Peterson in to grab it. Leadoff man retired sixth inning. Not a whole lot in the box score tonight, but one big swing back in the first. Spandlet off with the walk, scored on the Rendon homer. Wilson Ramos, a base hit off home plate, a high chopper later that inning. And that was it until Danny Espinosa tripled leading off the fifth. Ross had retired 10 straight and 12 of the previous 13 before that extra base hit by Danny. Now he's retired four in a row and 10 a row arc even better. Like a backup breaking ball that was hanging up and into Ryan Zimmerman. He's bounced out, and struck out swinging. Going to run that fastball back at 92. Big gap in left center. Kind of look at the outfield and know how they want to pitch Ryan Zimmerman. And a chopper, third base side. Pitcher gets to it in a hurry. Wide throw, and it pulled Alonzo off the bag. Well, I think if you're the official scorer, you have to ask yourself, was that a routine play? And they're going to give it an error. Yep. I don't know if that's a routine play. You tell me. You know, coming off the mound, we just showed Tanner Roark making a spectacular play. I guess a good throw's got him by a couple of steps, but. I think they might have got that right. Yeah, I think uh, the determining factor, bang bang play, or maybe a step away, probably gets a base hit. But you're right, it was two or three steps. Well, just anything to get Tyson Ross off the full windup. And here's Adam LaRoche. There's a wild pitch, and it kicks way up the first baseline. It took Zimmerman a second to spot it. 
Looked like that thing and sounded like it hit the shin guard of Rene Rivera and really kicked away. Well, I think it took him a second to recognize because it's, it was coming right at him. He couldn't tell if it was going back or to him. Watch the weird kick. Maybe lost it in LaRoche's leg, and here's where he breaks, right there. I'll show you this a great angle of it. See, you don't really have that depth perception when the ball's rolling right towards you. You finally realized it kicked far away and advanced. That's a big 90 feet, the way Ross is pitching right now. Every bag important. And LaRoche looking for RBI number 31. Ball two. It's a good take. Eighty five on the straight change and the count two and one Mercedes Benz will track it might have been a change could have been a backdoor slider that just backed up on him. either way it was eighty five and strike one sometimes it's hard to tell. And he's always got that slider he can go to well Rene Rivera lost track of the count right there. It looked like to me popped out of there quick. I don't know if he forgot there was a runner in second. It looked like he was ready to throw this around. No, he <laughs> just cleared himself and threw it back. E analyst. Just flashed it on the board. <laughs> two two. Way inside. Good block. Not sure how it missed LaRoche. Yeah, good block for a lot of reasons as a catcher you lose track of that ball when it goes behind the hitter like that so he slid over nice and with one out keeping Ryan Zimmerman at second base was big nice play by Rene Rivera slide over try to get in front keep it close three to the LaRoche with one out in the sixth. Good at bat by Adam LaRoche. He will walk for the 27th time this year. I mean, that's just great idea of some nasty pitches down and in. And now Wilson Ramos will hit the ball hard last time to Cabrera at shortstop. That's a chance. Ramos, one for two, that infield hit in the first. Now hitting safely nine of his last 10 games with 13 hits. Whoever the Nats play, but just pitching him away, away. That is a definite loss of release point there. <laughs> Seems like the one time they tried to come in several games ago, that's when Ramos. Hit that amazing home run into the bullpen in DC. It's supposed to be down the way and watch the slider kind of slip. Tyson Ross's hand. Long first inning. When he faced six batters, three made it aboard. That's a good point. Might be gassed. Ninety eight in his last start at Chicago and that was against the White Sox. Good swing back action there. Been over. Hundred pitches seven times this year Darren balls lead the San Diego pitching coach watching. Losses season high one hundred ten pitches. And Ramos hits this one well to right serious carry and it is over the glove of Seth Smith. Nets maybe get a tough break as that goes into the seats, but a run scores. LaRoche stops at third, and Wilson Ramos makes it 3 0. Well, they definitely didn't catch a break, and there's Ramos. He likes the ball close to him. He inside outs it. And I don't know if this was a good route or not by Seth Smith. It looked to me like 
if he went back initially, he might have had a chance at that. It would have been a tough play either way, but he ran across kind of an L route by Seth Smith, and the ball bounces into the stands, and that keeps Adam LaRoche at third base. But a nice swing by Wilson Ramos, who's really swung the bat well tonight. Maybe better than everybody minus Anthony Rendon. He's found a way to elevate Tyson Ross. Yeah, and other than that homer he hit into the left center bullpen at Nationals Park on the homestand, all of his hits lately, right center, right field, driving in runs. That's his strength. And here's Desmond who needs to do the same thing possibly right here. And yeah, the wild pitch is definitely in play right now with the way Ross has been bouncing that slider. Padre bullpen getting busy. Maybe the best name in baseball getting loose for the Padres. Kevin Quackenbush. Is that good stuff? Well, Desmond in the driver's seat here. 2 and 0. Oh. And that is 93 just running way up and in. Tyson Ross has really lost his command he's, in this inning. He's gassed. I'm trying to remember if he and Desmond swings 3 0 or not. It's not really ringing a bell. But if there was ever a time, how about right now? Get something elevated, let it fly. Three oh slider. Yeah, four pitch walk, bases loaded. Three walks in the game to this inning. I'll tell you what, you're seeing that a lot lately. Adam LaRoche, 3 0 curveball yesterday. Ian Desmond, a 3 0 slider right there. You know, the product of that is maybe Jason Worth doing all the damage he's done on 3 0 pitches this year. <laughs> Word spreading around the league that Matt Williams is a very aggressive manager, Good call. likes the green light. So, you know, with the base open, kind of an unintentional intentional right there. Just not laying in that automatic strike 3 0 to the Nats. We're seeing a lot of 3 0 off speed more than I've ever seen before. Got invited on the, the coach's camaraderie run today at 2 o'clock. Showed up at 148 and they were gone. <laughs> you think they told you and Coco the wrong time on purpose? I think so. I think they were playing a little media prank on us. <laughs> One of the skipper's office is it? Hey! He said, I told you too, huh? He said, we went at 130. I said, well, thanks for the invite anyways, but I'm going to bury you on TV tonight. Well, here's Danny Espinosa. <laughs> Took a breaking ball hard into the right field corner. Last time up. Middle infield backs up. They're looking for two. Corner guys, even with their bags. And Espinosa takes 92 at the knees. So at third base, Adam LaRoche, who walked. Zimmerman's already scored. There's Ramos who had the big RBI double. And then Ian Desmond who just walked. Easy to say against Ross, tough to do. Danny Espinosa trying to elevate him right here. Looking for a mistake up in the zone. Six hits in his last 13 at bats. Target in. And that one runs upstairs. 1-1. One, one. Nationals have won seven of the last ten games in this ballpark. Going back. To the 2011 season. We're trying to put a stamp on this one here in the sixth. Espinoza lifting one out of play left side. That was 85 on a high change. And he got a pitch. And now he's going to have to fight. And you're right, this would put a stamp on this one. We do some damage right here in the way Roark's pitching. It looks very good for the visiting club. One two count now with one out. 
Danny Espinosa hit by that pitch. He got hit hard. And that hurts. He gets an RBI. The Nats lead 4 0. Boy, that thing just tracking him. Nowhere to go. And you're right. There's times when Danny Espinosa's let a ball hit him this year. He had no chance right there. He had no way to get out of the way of that pitch. And Tyson Ross's command here has been all over the place this inning. He's definitely hit the wall, and Danny Espinosa with the toughest RBI I'll ever get. I'm thinking knee. Back knee. Oh, wow. Let's see if it got him. Did it get him right on the kneecap? They got Or below. Well, tough to say. This will show right here. My goodness, it gets him square. That's exactly how I cracked my kneecap. Same way. Danny Espinosa, 15th run batted in. Bases loaded again. Nate McLeod, the hitter, 0 for 2 on a couple of ground balls. That is one tough dude, folks. Mm. One tough dude. And it definitely wasn't a cramp. Well, and you know, Nate McLeod wants to atone for his check swing that kept him from driving in Espinosa just last inning. So now Nate has a big time chance. To put the Nats up by at least five. He's up there ripping and that breaking ball pouring down and in on him. Tough inning. A lot of collateral damage here. Look at this. You got the shin guard on and it doesn't hit your shin guard. Go figure. Counts even 1 1 93 downstairs. Tyson Ross started this inning with 70 pitches. He is three short of 100 now. The error then four consecutive base runners only one hitting his way aboard. That's inside two and one. See, that's a pretty good pitch. And if Tyson Ross was throwing strikes he'd have got that call but he's been all over the place this inning. And Jerry Meals not really looking for strikes. 24 pitches first inning, 28 here in the sixth. That's more than half of his total for the whole night in those two frames. Nate McLeod rips a base hit. Ramos scores. Desmond coming around. Seth Smith's throw, not in time. Great slide by Desmond. The Nats lead 6 0. Rene Rivera thinks he got him. And it looked to me like Desmond's foot got in there, and he's having an argument with Jerry Meals. Bud Black out of the Padres dugout. But a pretty good throw by Seth Smith. Bob Henley being very aggressive up by five runs, trying to make it six. And we'll check out the replay. I thought he beat it. A good at bat by Nate McLaughlin. Field in, takes advantage of the drawn in. Infield, base hit, a couple of RBIs, six nothing. Yeah, that tag looked great to me. Maybe I'm wrong and we'll see it here, but I thought Desmond's foot got in there before the tag. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. I don't know what Rivera was upset about. Yeah, Ian Desmond just powering his way into the plate there. There's his foot, and then there's the tag right there. He's past the plate. Nats have knocked out Tyson Ross. It is a six nothing lead here. Nate McLeod delivers two in the sixth.
This offense keeps rolling and rolling for the Nats. Six runs on five hits tonight. Three walks. A hit batter, Nate McLeod. Now 11 for his last 34. And he just drove in his fourth and fifth runs of the year. Well, you remember last year, the bench was a problem. Davey Johnson used to talk about it all the time. And this year, it has been anything but. And they were 20 and 24 in the absence of Ryan Zimmerman. Nate McLeod, a big part of that, and a big knock right here. And good teams don't miss a beat when you give a guy a day off. Padres expecting bunt here. First and second, one out. Tanner squaring around early against Quackenbush, who misses way outside. I think it'd be tough to come in out of the bullpen and throw strikes right away to a guy squaring around. Well, the Nats saw Quackenbush in that series. In April, back in D.C., it's the first thing you see is a guy squaring around a bunt, and your catcher sitting way outside. That one goes straight back. Counts even, one-one. Yeah, Quackenbush fastball ninety-one, curveball seventy-six, and the split eighty-three. Twenty-five-year-old right-hander from Land Lakes, Florida. Eighth rounder by the Padres three years ago. It's been a reliever throughout his professional career. Target away. Roark deadens it. Third base side. Pitcher never even thought about going over there. Espinosa moves up and so does McLeod. Two good speed guys. And Tanner Roark has his sixth sacrifice bunt. Espinosa looked okay running from second to third right there, and that's a good sign from Matt Williams and everybody in that third base dugout. Nice bunt by Tanner Roark. Skipper will give him some love. Well, they've reached the magical full run level and gone two beyond. Tanner Roark, a good job. He gets to get a breather here. And Denard Span is the ninth nat to bat in the inning. He's 0 for 1 career against Kevin Quackenbush. Ninety two to the outer half. And Span will lift one to center. Big inning for the Nats. They took advantage of an error, put four on the board to lead six nothing. Copy you at a telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. 
And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. One of the few bats not making any noise right now. That one. We're going bottom six. Tanner Roar pitching another outstanding ball game. And he has a huge lead with which to work now. Well, hopefully Anthony Rendon's right hand okay. Kevin Franzen gives him the rest of the night off. First pitch strike to the leadoff man Cabrera. Here's a ground ball. The Anthony Rendon in the the meat hand. Looks like got him in the thumb. We don't know what's going on, but we had trouble after that throwing. And Kevin Franzen into the game. Everth Cabrera has struck out and bounced back to the pitcher when Roark went way over toward first base to grab his ground ball. Fastball upstairs for the strikeout. And that's a new career high, number nine. In two starts against the Padres, just over 14 innings, 17 strikeouts. Well, he's got Cabrera twice on fastballs up with two strikes. Climbing the ladder right here with a good heater. You see Ramos asking for it up. And Roark gives it to him for strike three. Here's Seth Smith. He's grounded his second, flight to center. Well, you get a big lead, just attack the strike zone. We finally got some run support. Last time out, the tough luck loser to you, Darvish. Yeah. Seven innings, he gave up just one run and took the loss. That's a tough one. Yeah. He's had a few tough luck losses this year tonight. He's got six runs to work with in the bottom of the sixth. During his three game losing streak, he's lost two to one, three to two, and one nothing. One ball and two strikes to Smith. Pretty good breaking ball. It is midnight in D.C. And all along the Masson footprint back in the mid Atlantic. Glad you're with us tonight. Bob Carpenter, F.P. Santangelo, Dan Coco from Petco Park. The Nats have come into a pitcher's park and put six runs on the board. And Roark will miss with a fastball upstairs. Three and two to Seth Smith with Carlos Quentin on deck. Got him to chop. He was reaching. Roark over to cover. LaRoche right to him. Two down. Padres box score. Pretty empty. He'd have a no hitter going if Alonzo didn't show up. And that was a, a pitch up that Yonder Alonzo flipped to left field with one out in the second for a double. A couple of errors since then. By Anthony Rendon, the only San Diego base runners. Carlos Quentin 0 for 2. And he'll chop it to third. Chance for Kevin Franzen on the move. And Tanner Roark keeps dominating the San Diego Padres. Nine strikeouts. One hit through six.
domination of Tanner Roar. Keep shutting down the Padres, Epi. That's 15 innings now against them. No runs on four hits. He just had a good game plan going all night long. I mean, he's been elevating the fastball with two strikes. Got some runs to work with early because of the Anthony Rendon home run. But, you know, Ross was good, too. He was down the zone early. Hit the wall, lost his command. But this was a pitcher's duel for a long time. But you get that feeling as a pitcher to where, hey, this is my team. Had a complete game against him. But Tanner Roark with some serious ownage so far this year, the San Diego Padres. Kevin Franson gets an AB right after he takes over for Anthony Rendon. Let's have a look at our Honda do up. And against the West, Kevin Franson, of course, a lot of experience, played in this division as well with the Giants. Ryan Zimmerman, always great when the Nats come out here. And Adam LaRoche. Partly because of his success here in San Diego with 10 career home runs. Very good as well. Trust us, he's in there, he's waiting. One and one, and rip the other way, foul by Kevin Franzen. And a one-two fastball chopped out to short. Everth Cabrera. Well, the Braves are coming down, folks. June 19th through the 22nd. Don't miss the midseason NL East matchup as the Nats battle the Atlanta Braves. Get your game tickets by calling 202-675-NATS or visit nationals.com slash tomahawk. No, slash tickets. Just quick. By the way, Atlanta 3 2, top of the eighth at Arizona. Braves on top. And a breaking ball. Ryan Zimmerman to the left side for Chase Headley. Back in Bush, couple of quick outs. Well, this is beard on beard right here. Bracken Bush's beard versus Adam LaRoche's beard. And LaRoche with one of the best beards in baseball, so this could be interesting. Adam LaRoche facing him for the first time. 0 for 2, but drew a big walk right after that error last inning. Zimmerman had gone to second on a wild pitch. <laughs> that is beard on beard on beard. That not the best beard in the league. <laughs> yeah, I think you can pitch to that guy. I'm not sure about LaRoche. Yeah, hard and soft away. Good beard. Getting a night off. Jason Worth. It's great beard. Nats fans will get all over me if I say anything less. Hmm. We got. Solid. In progress. He goes with it by. Late August, he'll catch up. By the way, the hot Danny Espinosa going clean shaven these days. Swinging the bat great. On base twice tonight. And the 0-2 to Adam LaRoche. Got him with a changeup upstairs. A 1-2-3-7. It's our Hyundai seventh inning stretch at Petco Park in San Diego. Beautiful night. Fantastic ballpark. And right now...
inside the Tanner Roark numbers with G. Nothing to the Padres. Four hits in 15 innings. Not a bad strikeout to walk ratio. Here's Chase Headley. Seventh inning underway. Headley 0 for 2. Foul out to right. Swinging strikeout. Souvenir, good crowd here, but the Nats have just shut down Petco Park, except for those in red. And a 1 1 pitch here. Tailing away, and Headley hits it to left. Long run for Ryan Zimmerman. He'll get there. There is no question about what he can do with the glove. His best play so far. And I think he's going to throw fine out there as well but you have been watching him shag in batting practice for a couple of weeks now and this is what we've seen so not a surprise we've been talking about how he's going to be fine out there wall approaching track approaching not a problem good jump good wheels good athlete and a nice play by ryan zimmerman strike to yonder alonzo that's ryan left field that's what we start calling it. I'm going to start calling him Gas. He's like this place. Give me a tip of the cap. I'm It's fun to watch. Hey, good ball players. I'm not saying put him anywhere, but the Nats knew they weren't just going to be hiding him in left field. Absolutely not. One ball, one strike to Yonder Alonso, who has the game's only San Diego hit. It's a breaking ball hit right to Adam LaRoche. He'll go to the bag himself, two down. Well, this is exactly what you have to do to teams that aren't swinging the bat. You, you can't let them think they're going to get hot tonight versus you. When you have a team down, you, you step on them, and that's just the way it goes at the highest level. And that's exactly what Tanner Roark has been doing to the Padres here tonight. You get a couple of hits and they think okay tonight's our night to break out. No, that's not what's going to happen. And that's the attitude you have to have and it's not a surprise that Matt Williams pitcher Tanner Roark has that mentality and has that makeup makeup off the charts. It's not as good as our makeup, mm. but it's good. It's a different kind of makeup. That is a fantastic changeup. Oh and two watch Mercedes track this fastball away combio away. So Will Venable in an instant, an 0 2 count. Pitch count just fine. Upstairs, high gas, and double digit strikeout action for Tanner Roar. A 10 pitch inning. He wouldn't go that route thing again, would he?
Paul Tanner Roark. Top of the eighth inning, six to nothing. You can celebrate Father's Day Sunday, June 15th with the Potomac Nationals at Fitzner Stadium. Enjoy a pregame picnic, qualify for gifts, including Ironman jerseys and more. Go to PotomacNationals.com or call the number on your screen. And Tanner Roark would be interested to hear what happened with Gio Gonzalez down there tonight. Yeah, it wasn't too great, really. Gio had a couple of good first innings. Five pitches, three ground outs in the top of the first, 14 pitches, a couple of ground balls in the second, and then he gave up a grand slam later in the outing. So for the night, Gio went three and two thirds, eight runs earned, seven hits, four walks, struck out two. The important thing is, how does he feel tomorrow yeah, morning? How does he come out of it? You know, you don't worry too much about the result. He did throw 65 pitches, but 34 strikes. So we'll see how it goes. And this is Jason Lane. Now the Nats have faced him before, but it was our pitchers facing him. He was with Houston as a position player, and now he has made the transition to the mound. Great story. The opposite of Ricky and Keel. Yeah. How about that? Drops a little jump right there on Wilson <laughs> Ramos, leading off the top of the eighth inning. Jason Lane. Called up Tuesday from Triple A El Paso. He was a 241 career hitter. The guy had pop. 61 homers, 189 RBIs. Most of this time with Houston. And then a little bit at the end with San Diego. Ramos. And he's robbed by Jace Peterson. Nice play. Had him played perfect in Wilson Ramos, the best at bats by far of any national tonight. Another bullet off his bat, but he's robbed this time by Peterson. Hit it on the screws. Peterson showing some elevation. Wilson Ramos very close to a three hit night. Ian Desmond 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Eighty good looking change up so far. And Desmond can't reach that. One ball, two strikes. I'm trying to think of a Nats pitcher that can or a Nats player that could convert to a pitcher. I'm thinking the guy on deck. This ball hit well to right center. Ian Desmond checks in with a base hit. He'll go to second now. Ball bobbled out there by Will Venable. I don't think Desmond hesitated. They could rule that a double. But a nice inside out swing for Ian Desmond. Check it in with a one for three. Inside pitch going the other way. And he did bobble it. But if Desmond didn't slow down, they can rule out a double. Let's see if Desmond hesitates. Now he didn't hesitate at all. It's going to be a single and an error on Will Venable. And that is Will Venable's first error of the year. You know, just as you said that about the whole position player to pitcher thing I too was thinking about Danny Espinosa they throw about 97 <laughs> he wouldn't be allowed crow hops though over the mound you'd have to I think Bryce stay on the rubber. Bryce would be mid 90s yeah I think he was Bryce would be the best hitting pitcher in the league Danny Espinosa the best fielding pitcher ever you better talk to Greg Maddox about that one Kick pick it with Espinosa. Yeah, that's true. Might be the best defensive second baseman in the league. Espinosa goes around to the right side, hitting 234 there this year. A couple of his home runs, and that one tailing away from him. Espinosa thought he was on it, two outs. Nissan will track it. Yeah, it looked like a change up down the zone, 78 miles an hour.
Nate McLeod a big hit last time up. He more than atoned. For that out back in the fifth with Espinosa on third nobody out. By pulling a base hit driving in two. And really opening up breathing room for Tanner Roark and the Nets. Two and zero. Oh. And he got Jim. Right side, Jace Peterson. This one going to the bottom of the eighth. Tanner Roark show continues in a moment. Ninety-two pitches through seven. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. I don't think Soriano is going to need to untuck tonight. The Nats are way ahead in this one. Six outs to get at Petco Park in front of a crowd of 25,346. 92 pitches, 65 strikes through seven on one hit by Tanner Roark. Rene Rivera the catcher, Jace Peterson the second baseman, and then they'll hit for the reliever, Jason Lane. Hard hit, base hit, only their second tonight. Rivera had one of the three hits against Roark in the game earlier in D.C. Well, let's check out Ryan Zimmerman in left field tonight. First time in the gray unis as a left fielder. So how did Ryan left field do tonight? Good route. Makes a nice play down the corner. And this one was impressive. Got a good jump. Reached out, made a nice play as the wall was approaching. Tanner Roark approved. Number eight man, Jace Peterson. He has struck out, reached on an air by Rendon. That was that bad hop grounder. And Roark throws a double play ball. Espinosa boots it. And they still got the runner at second base. Danny Espinosa improvising after that one got away. Boy, he stayed with that nice. Should have been a double play, but popped out of his glove. So, you know, did he hang his head and say, I should have made that play? No, he stayed with it nice. The bare hand flip, or the glove flip, excuse me, to Ian Desmond to get the out. How about this quick reaction? Ian Desmond might have paid the price right here with a cleat. Let's see what happens at the end. Definite contact from Rivera. 
And the umpire Jordan Baker waited a good while to make that call. He totally checked out the fact that Desmond was on the bag when he received that throw. So, hey, all you want at this stage of the game are outs. And Espinosa got that part of it done. Tommy Medica, the pinch hitter here. Facing Tanner Roark for the first time. Tommy Medica, 25 year old infielder from San Jose. Went to Santa Clara. 290 for the Padres in 19 games as a call up last year. That's a great breaking ball here in the eighth inning. Medica has a pinch hitter, three for nine with an RBI. I think Ryan's first test as a left fielder is going to be in San Francisco that last game, the day game. It's a sun field out there. It's a oh tough boy. left field to play. But other than that, he is just he's fine out there. Still going to be a process, but I think the learning curve is short. And that ball hanging a bit. Zimmerman takes it on a hop. Two on. One out. Top of the order now, Everett Cabrera. And there is movement in the Nats bullpen. Nobody going to work just yet. And I changed a Desmond hit to a double, so I don't have to change my scorecard. Okay, Thank Ross Deadweiler just took his jacket off. Looks like a bear is getting ready. Not a bad pitch from Roark right there. Just a slider down the way, dug it out. Runs He's that fastball in there nicely. Still got plenty in the tank. Pitch number 100 coming from Tanner Roark. He struck out Cabrera twice tonight. That's a change up low. One still thrown the ball by big league hitters in his eighth inning of work. Well, he struck him out twice on an elevated fastball. So let's see if he goes to the well right here in a one two count. Throws the 91 by Cabrera, but he's chased letter high fastballs twice. Yeah, there he goes. Cabrera three times. That's number 11. Boy, I've been there. You get in a rut as a hitter, and especially a left-handed hitter from a right-handed pitcher. You see that ball in your eyes, and you think you can get it. It's right there. It looks like it's on a tee, and it's hard to lay off of. And Cabrera's in one of those runs here tonight against Tanner Roark. Cannot lay off the high fastball. I know exactly how that feels. For the Padres, it's up to right now their best hitter, Seth Smith. Tanner has retired him on a fly ball and two grounders tonight. Takes a little bit off and just runs that thing to the outside edge. Still got plenty in the tank. Padre score, he's out of the game. If they don't, he stays in. Due to lead off in the ninth and just misses away. One ball, one strike. His 11th big league win. It's his 17th start. Fourth inning took a while because of an error. Everything else pretty quick, pretty economical tonight. A 
Ramos snaps it back down into the strike zone. Good pitch, good frame. Like I said, he's still got plenty in the tank. The velocity's there. He's down in the zone. He's still got movement. Even though he's about to throw pitch 107. Deep breath, look in, get a sign. And a fly ball popped up. Desmond out. Tells everybody he's got it. And Tanner Roark continues to shut out San Diego to the tune of 17 consecutive innings this year. Mark doing his thing. 11 strikeouts tonight, three hits, no runs. And I don't know if he's going to come out for the ninth. Might have been wrong about that. Nate McLeod, the big knock. But Anthony Rendon got the West Coast swing started. Usually this place is the Hotel California. You can fly out any time you like, but you can never leave. Anthony Rendon gets this party started with a two-run homer. And then this is the play where I think it got him in the thumb right there. Little side hop. You got a couple tricky hops down there at third base tonight. He would leave the game, and we don't know what's going on with that hand of Anthony Rendon. Tanner Roark getting handshakes from his teammates. Eight innings, three hits, 11 strikeouts. Nothing else to talk about because they didn't do anything else against him. 107 the pitch count, 77 strikes. Gamer. How about that? Absolute game. Scott Hairston. For the Nats in the top of the ninth. Goes this yard pretty well played here. 0 7 8 and 9. And he's facing. Former Oriole Troy Patton who came over here in the Nick Hundley deal that sent that catcher to Baltimore. Sounded like a broken bat out to Everth Cabrera, the shortstop. One out. All right, folks, remember DC Lexus dealers are donating 250 bucks to the Children's National Medical Center for every home run a Nats player hits this season. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Roark, the pursuit of perfection twice against San Diego, huh? Yeah. There's Denard Spann. Hitless tonight, but a first inning walk ahead of a two run homer that set a good early tone for the Nats. Friends in to follow here in the ninth. Blake Trinan, Andrew Kashner tomorrow night. One ball, one strike. Of 
So if you're wondering why Matt Williams. He's taking the ball from Tanner Roark. His next start after the shutout against the Padres, against the Phillies, he lasted four innings and gave up seven runs all earned. Hmm. Hasn't been a starter that long. So you might want to see a complete game, but you might also want to see Tanner Roark in his next start against what? The Giants have his A stuff. He would go on Wednesday there. It's a good move. And Span will look at that one low. Span lifting one deep to right center, going back Seth Smith. Yeah, this is the time of the night when those don't go unless you absolutely kill them. Well, tomorrow night, as mentioned, Blake Trinan back into the rotation. Andrew Kashner, hard throwing right hander, but he's had a sore elbow and been on the DL since the middle of May. Blake Trinan's 0 2 with a 140 ERA, making his third start. 9:30 Nats extra on Masson tomorrow night. FP and I'll join you from Petco Park at 10. Cashier's been tough at home. 167 ERA and five starts here at Petco. He threw a 65 pitch simulated game Monday after throwing his bullpen Wednesday, and he'll be on a short leash tomorrow for Bud Black. But Cashier, a guy that throws in the upper 90s, it'll be a good test for the Nats hitters. Here he is. Be on the bump tomorrow. Bud Black called it a high intensity simulated game. For those of you who don't know, that you roll out the cage and you get a few extra players in there. And you try to simulate a game. Pitching coaches stand behind the cage and say, that's a hit, that's an out. Usually the pitcher will walk off the mound, sit in the dugout, pretend, you know, resting between innings, and then go back out and do it again. I don't know what a high intensity simulated game is. Maybe he said bases loaded, nobody out. Yeah. Good luck. By the way, Kashner not facing Tanner Roar this time around. He's happy about that. And so Franzen gone. That's it for the Nats offense tonight. Six runs on six hits. Well, 11 is the magic number, so if you're still up, kids, count with me. Tanner Roar, your career high. One, two, three, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 and 11 is the magic number, a career high for Tanner Roar. You lost the adults at eight. Well, I'm so tired they were on the West Coast. <laughs> I started wondering if I was getting messed up in the middle of that. Yeah. He was bigger than life tonight. Huh? Unbelievable. A complete game tonight. Eight shutout innings. Six hits. Three each time. The walk came back in April. And 11 of those 19 strikeouts tonight. Impressive. Amazing. Pick your word. Here's Ross Denweiler for the bottom of the ninth. Quentin Headley Alonzo for San Diego. Adam Kilgore tweeted this 10 minutes ago. Nat starters the past four games, 31 strikeouts, one walk. That's a ratio that would help you win a couple of games. That's unbelievable. <laughs> 31 strikeouts, one walk. And it's clicking on all cylinders. He was a part of it. And as we mentioned, there's Jordan Zimmerman. We'll see him later in the series. If it all holds up for Roark tonight, that would be 14 of the last 15 Nats games where the starter gets the decision. You know, and they're not all wins, but that means they're pitching deep. And the bullpen is going to be well rested. It's starting to click. 0 2. And Detweather tantalizing. Carlos Quentin with a breaking ball outside. Steven Strasburg will next pitch Monday. In San Francisco. He's home right now, chilling. Padres probably bombed you, didn't pitch the series. Look at that heater. Yeah, that cost him some attendance. Great fastball by Ross Denwell. Fans follow every Nats game no matter what time it's on with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live lookings, instant replays, score stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Nationals.com this morning. Today. Tomorrow. They're in tomorrow. We're still in today. And that's really weird. Chase Headley with a fly ball to right center for Denard Span. Deadweiler, a couple of quick outs here. And that almost makes my quote a couple of years ago. Work. The best thing about today is that tomorrow's over. But we could say that on the West Coast almost. So, kind of. Yeah, I know what you mean. You, get, you got it? You with me? Come a few bars. I'll try to sing along. There's Yonder Alonzo with one out to go. That counted to 11. My brain is just almost exploded. It's as high as I go. One final check of the scoreboard here has Atlanta. 5-2 at Arizona. Nobody on base, one out, bottom of the ninth. So it looks like the Braves will hold on. The Nats will stay a game back and go into a tie with Miami. That's a great pitch, 93 with movement at the knees. Be a nice feeling for Ross Detweiler to shake some hands after a ninth inning. And that is fair and fair and right to the bag and the game is over. Two hours and 32 minutes. A gem for Tanner Roark. And he combines with Detweiler to shut out San Diego again. Great way to start the West Coast swing. And a tough series against the Giants coming up. A couple more tough games against the Padres. Head to St. Louis. So, so far, so good for Matt Williams' squad. They did it all here tonight. Nats win it 6 0, and they're three games over 500. Four straight, and six of the last seven now. Tomorrow night, Blake Trinan follows Tanner Roark. Game two of the series, Nats Extra 9 30. This has been a massive presentation. Stay tuned for Johnny and Ray next from San Diego. See you later.